Is Helldivers 2 worth playing? Is it too late to get into? Join me on a trip into hell tonight to find out. Join the Helldivers. Become part of an elite peacekeeping force! See exotic new life forms. And spread managed democracy throughout the galaxy. Become a hero. Become a legend. Become a Helldiver. Helldivers 2 is a co-op third-person shooter that doesn't really take itself too seriously. If you enjoyed Starship Troopers, then its humor will probably sit really well with you. Who needs a knife in a nuke fight anyway? All you gotta do is push a button. The enemy cannot push a button if you disable his hand. The silly phrases and the maniacal laughter <laughs> after dumping an entire mag into an enemy uh, keeps the, the humor in tune with the original Starship Troopers movie. The only good bug is a dead bug. Uh, those moments are needed as you get into the harder difficulties because it can be, well, well, it's hell divers. It can be hell. No joke, the bots and the bugs throw all they can at you to keep you from spreading democracy. You are the last line of offense. You are a hell diver, and your job is to spread democracy to the galaxy. Uh, your enemies are the automatons or the bots or the clankers, as people call them, and the arachnids uh, or bugs, as everyone calls them. Uh, and apparently there's more to come with that from Helldivers 1. Uh, you and up to three of your comrades drop down on various planets using an assortment of guns, grenades. Stratagems are basically your support and include heavy weapons, air support, orbital support, turrets, and even mechs these days. You also get a fair share of customization after you've proven yourself in battle, or with your wallet, I guess. Uh, you won't be able to just buy your way into the goods, though. You'll actually have to put in the work and make sure you thoroughly spread democracy by completing missions and campaigns through nine different difficulties. It starts at one, trivial, uh, which your grandmother can do, and then goes all the way up to nine, Helldiver, which I would leave your grandmother out of this one. And it'll have you clenching your cheeks as all hell breaks loose around you. There have been plenty of these level nine missions that we haven't completed. Um, I never really have a full stack of four, but... You know, it's tough even when you have voice comms on. Planets themselves can be hell between electrical storms, sandstorms, ice storms, thick fog, fire tornadoes. Even the planets don't want your democracy. And there are a lot of them. Speaking of planetary hazards, if you have watched any of the other videos on this channel, at the time of making this, they are all stalker related. I love atmosphere. It is one of those key things that keeps me wanting to play a game and keeps me from getting bored, really. It keeps me immersed. I love the immersion. Uh, Helldivers does this very well and is a game that inspired me to make a video again, which hasn't happened since Stalker 2 was delayed. The planets are somewhat procedurally generated, which makes sense because some of the missions have massive maps that you can run around for 45-ish minutes, but they do a great job of making the planets themselves feel atmospheric. Not really lived in, I would say. I wouldn't say many of the planets have a feel like they have had civilizations on them, but the flora, the interactivity, and the terrains are all pretty awesome. The air also feels unique on every planet, whether it's like the lightning bugs, the sand specks flying around, the dirt particles, all, you, all of them have their own unique vibe. As mentioned earlier, the planetary roadblocks that make your life that much harder make this game such a fun and it's like kind of unique experience. Extracting with no respawns while bots pile on you during a crazy sandstorm is exhilarating. Doing literally anything with the fire tornadoes is a pain in the ass, but adds such a unique perspective to fighting. Assaulting a base only to have all three teammates die and not be able to reinforce because of an electrical storm is blocking your stratagems is such a wild experience to play through. There are so many different environmental hazards, it really makes for a different experience on every different planet you play through. Planets really cater to the enemies as well. The big uh, bot bases are crazy with factories spread out and metal bridges to cross over to other platforms with fences. The outposts are all red with red landmines and robots everywhere. The heavy bot bases are even more insane. They're huge with these massive walls that you can't jump over. The best part about uh, most of the environment is that it can all be leveled 
a hell bomb or one of the eagle 500k strikes can level it all to nothing leaving nothing but black soot and holes and dirt and samples of course the bug holes fit into most planets pretty good as well when you're in a heavy nest trying to avoid the endless hordes and close as many holes as you can before you die it really feels like that's where you are i really don't have this life experience thankfully but i can imagine being in a real bug's nest would be pretty similar to the chaos and the uneven terrains which can trip you up and then you're swarmed by massive bugs and next thing you know it you're dead every time i drop in on a bug planet i feel like i'm torn between a starship troopers movie and the tremors movie from the 90s broke into the wrong goddamn rec room didn't you you bastard the random bug holes, massive firefights, and trains of bugs that will chase you down and rip you to pieces as bile flies onto your armor, burning, that is already drenched in their fellow buglets, makes for a hell of an experience in a video game. Looking up to the sky and seeing other players' ships and even your own is awesome. It accents the already beautiful skyboxes very well. Seeing other people's stratagems and lasers in the distance add to the war zone feeling very well. But in a weird way, it's so satisfying. It gives you confidence, like we are stronger than the enemy, which isn't always the case. The ships are also really nicely thought out. As you upgrade your facilities, you can see the upgrades in the background. When you upgrade the Eagle, you can see it in the back hangar. When you join another player, you hop out of a cryo chamber and your character is frozen and stiff getting out. That is a nice touch that I feel is lost among most games these days. The war room with a table in the middle and the big windows feel so metal and warhammerish. But at the same time, I'm expecting to hear the voice from Starship Troopers as I read the major order. Would, Would you like, you like to, know to know more? Everyone's doing their part. Are you? The war effort needs your effort at work, at home, in your community. <laughs> The gameplay honestly feels great. It is nostalgic of Gears of War horde third person grub killing with sci-fi chunky guns. Note, I would love a chainsaw or a sword in this. It would be awesome. Uh, mixed with left for dead missions or with an arsenal of cosmetics. That honestly kind of reminds me of Halo 3. Man, the late 2000s had really great games. The movement is fairly clean with a nice dolphin dive that can save you from being eaten alive or have you face planting into a pit of death. Traversal has its occasional kinks with the generated world, but surprisingly not as many as I experienced with other games like Starfield or Ghost Recon Breakpoint. The guns, for the, all for the most part, feel great. They all have a place between the standard AR to the marksman rifle. Submachine guns are fun. The shotguns are very good. And the energy guns, I haven't used them as much, but recently I've been using the one from the free battle pass, and it's pretty good. There is a decent bit of choice here, and with the new war bonds that are coming out and have come out, uh, there's a pretty nice variety as well. There are, at the time of writing this, around 50 stratagems. So you have a lot of options when it comes to strategizing. Uh, if you're on a defensive mission, you can take more turrets. If you're on a blitz, you can take more air support and a grenade launcher. If you want to kill yourself repeatedly and piss off your teammates, you can load up on a flamethrower and incendiary mines. I can't possibly cover all these in the 10 to 15 minute video I'm trying to make, but personally, I am a pretty big fan of the Eagle Strikes, the Orbital Laser, the Queso Cannon, uh, the Grenade Launcher, Guard Dogs, and the Shield Pack, of course, because uh, Lord knows I'm gonna die sometimes without it. Calling the stratagems and even reinforcements is a puzzle as well. You have to do inputs like the DDR games or the Konami code to call in your items uh, and strikes. I think that's also a nice touch that will get you killed more times than you realize. To upgrade your stratagems, cooldowns, health, power, etc., you'll need to find samples. There are three kinds, common, rare, and super. These can be a bit tedious, but do give you a reason to grind the game. Um, they add a cool element as you do drop them when you die. So it prioritizes living, or at least going back to pick them up before you extract. As for what you'll be doing, it really depends on the difficulty. This ranges from trivial level one to Helldiver at level nine. You can get common samples at all levels. Rare samples start at level 4, challenging, and super samples start at level 7. The higher, di the higher the difficulty, the more potential samples as well. You gotta have something to trade your sanity for, am I right? With these difficulties also comes mission types. I think there are 30-ish, I may be a little wrong, but there's a good bit. The higher the difficulty, the smaller the pool gets. Some of these are eliminating boss enemies. It can be quite numerous uh, in the higher difficulties. But they released a new mission type as I'm writing this, so I'm sure that there'll be plenty of more diversity to come. 
As for enemies, for the bugs, there are 9 to 10 enemy types right now, with the Bile Titans, Brood Commanders, and Chargers being the tanky and deadly boss archetypes. While the Bile Spewers, Nursing Spewers, and Stalkers being the annoy annoying enemies that will kill you before you really understand how. Shriekers are the newer birds. Take down the bird's nest ASAP is all I will say. The bot enemies are straight out of Terminator and Star Wars, as well as an M1 Abrams and giant walking factories. The bots can be a bit scary and deadly, but if you shoot the glowy red spots, they aren't all that bad. The worst things are the flamethrower hulks, as fire will kill you fast in this game. I feel like it like, crits you almost instantly. Uh, and the turrets, because if you get hit by a turret, even if it doesn't kill you, it will send you flying into orbit. Um, there are 9 or 10 bot enemy types as well, but they seem to be adding more and more. Uh, that is one of the things I like most about this game is the content updates. They seem to actually be normal, you know, every twice a month I feel like, and have some weight to them, unlike most live service games or something. Live service. A point of contention, and most people including myself, write off the newer live service games, but I do believe, at least in the two months that Helldivers 2 has been out. They've done a fairly good job in upholding the content releases with the new stratagems, armor, enemy types, uh, and two new war bonds with a third just announced. Uh, war bonds are their version of the battle pass, if you don't know. It is not time gated though, so not as much FOMO in that aspect. So the content seems to be flowing pretty good. Will that keep up though? I'm not sure. The players actually influence the game by completing major orders or not and end up being scolded by high command. Uh, these are typically liberating and or defending certain planets to hold off bug or bot invasions um, While I was writing this we eliminated the bots entirely And then the next day they came back with a force that made my, my level on Creek look like child's play But it's it's the it's these big moments that kind of come out of left field For any live service game is just incredible to me. I I I haven't really witnessed that, you know, with something other than Fortnite, maybe, but I'm not really much of a Fortniter. Um, these major orders are typically put into place by a game master, air quotes, who is in control of what planets are being attacked and how much. I think of like an Arma game master constantly throwing troops at you and keeping the operation flowing smoothly, but not easily. One of the cool things the Game Master, and I guess technically the devs did, is before the mech suit dropped, they were randomly dropping them into people's lobbies to test the mechs. I was lucky enough to have one of these at one point later on before they released, and it felt great. Then a week later, there was a major order to liberate a planet so we can mass produce the mechs. Once, once the players liberated the planet and democracy had won, the players had the new mech stratagem unlocked. The level of interaction the devs are having with the players and the community through this game itself it's incredible. They're also very active on social media with the devs talking to players a good bit on Reddit, Twitter, etc. How sustainable this is with the amount of shitty people on the internet, I'm not 100% sure, probably not very long, but it is very awesome to see right now. The Twitter account, and I'm assuming others, is very active. They make art for accomplishing operations, put posters up for Remember the Creek. You, know, you just had to be at Malevolon Creek to understand. They post, you know, air quote news videos uh, announcing the new operations with such great production quality. They also repost and share a ton of the community clips, art, etc. The, uh, the instant community support around this game has been incredible. Unfortunately, no live service game would be complete without microtransactions. However, the devs at Arrowhead said they should earn the right to monetize the game. And I applaud that idea. If it stays that way down the road, who knows? But they certainly kicked it off in a good way. In-game currency is called super credits, and you can buy these with real money, or you can find them in missions, in bunkers and caves, just by exploring around the maps. You can also earn these through the war bonds. With these super credits, you can buy cosmetics, armor, and helmets. Uh, I know the armor has perks, but you know they're really just variants of the three types of armor, and there's, there'll be other armors with those same perks that you don't have to buy. Uh, the way they set up the store with the item reviews is hilarious, especially with the disclaimer reading. All reviews have been devised by Super Earth's Ministry of Truth after an analysis to reflect accurate opinions. You know, basically saying they were coerced into it. I think that's hilarious. I absolutely love the level of satire this game exudes. Uh, the other items you can purchase with super credits are the war bonds, which are the battle passes. 
Uh, these have weapons, armor, perks, more super credits, banners, emotes, etc. However, they are not instantly accessible. You, you do have to play the game to unlock enough medals, which you get for completing missions, campaigns, daily missions, major orders, and finding them around the planets, exploring, uh, basically playing the game, you know? Um, so I wouldn't say the game is pay to win. I would say it's more play to win. Overall, Helldivers 2 is really just freaking awesome. If you like co-op survival shooters or space or starship troopers or just a gun game to play with friends, if you have them, this should be on your radar or in your game library already. With plenty of updates on the horizon and plenty of updates already in the game, 40 USD is an easy grab. It won't be game of the year or a game I personally grind the hell out of, but casually doing a few operations a week, I think this game is absolutely perfect for it. Um, if you've watched this far, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. Uh, I'm trying to do more videos, you know, Stalker 2 getting delayed really kicked me in the balls, but you know, I'll do more Stalker related content, I'll do more content in general, this video is just kind of me trying to get back into it. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining me on this journey into hell. This has been Loner JB. good night.